Hey guys, I am finally making a makeup video. So I'm so out of loop. If you guys have been following me on Snapchat, I was like asking for your guys' advice. I'm so out of loop with wearing makeup and doing makeup that I just want to just get back into it because it just makes me happy. Like it's my passion, it's what I like to do. So um, I don't know what look to film and I also want to make a beauty haul video after this. So I thought I'll keep it for like fairly neutral so then if I want to swatch any lipsticks or whatever it kind of just all goes if that makes sense but I thought I would do then um like my go-to look and this is so simple this is what I do when nothing else makes sense when yeah nothing else makes sense this is the look I go for basically and it's just literally liner and a nude lip and like bronzy kind of cheeks so um, I'm not sure if I've done it before I may have because it's my go-to but um, yeah I'm filming in my um, in our bedroom basically because as you guys know we had our baby um, and he um, although he still sleeps he's sleeping with us in our room he, my makeup room is now like his kind of walk-in wardrobe if <laughs> so yeah so I'm sorry that the background's not exactly aesthetically pleasing but um I just gotta just do the best with what you have really so that's what I'm doing I'm just gonna tie um my hair up and yeah I think my head's cut off right this is better I'm sat on my um, cushion, my memory foam cushion. If you watched my postpartum video, you'll know all about this cushion. It's the only way I can sit um, on a wooden chair. But yeah, first before I do anything else, I'm using my Elizabeth Harden 8 Hour Cream. And like my friends asked me about this, like if it's worth it, like you can get Vaseline for like a pound or something, but Vaseline, I feel like it creates like this barrier on your lips, but it doesn't actually hydrate your lips. Um, it makes them feel softer um, but it just doesn't do anything I don't think for your lips conditioning them long term whereas the 8 hour cream is it definitely moisturises it protects your skin as well and it's good for any irritation as well you get on your skin um, it's good for skin burns and um, obviously mild ones not like you know intense burns and anything like that um, sunburn and all that kind of stuff so this is actually the original one I know you can get like a non scented version but I actually like the scent so um, yeah so I just leave that on my lips and then moisturizer my skin has been playing up ever since I had my baby um, it was kind of okay during pregnancy although I don't really feel like I got that pregnancy glow that everyone talks about but yeah, um, it's been very dry ever since I've given birth. And obviously like that winter period, I wasn't taking care of my skin. Like that wasn't my priority. I was just just trying to get through one day to the next. But um, I've been using the Oilatum cream. This isn't, I know they do an Oilatum face cream, which is a lot lighter. This is um, paraffin basically, light liquid paraffin. It's an emollient. A moisturizer basically but it's really thick and it's great if you've got kind of eczema or very dry skin I get really dry skin here like all around this part of my nose like the nostrils around here I get dry skin and then just it's like this area I get really dry and so this cream is where um, this cream has been I couldn't talk <laughs> this cream has been really has really come in handy for that because it just sinks in it's really thick really nourishing and it's like a hug for my face basically so so I apply that mostly here and then I already applied my um, day cream which is the Clarins Hydro Quench um, my friend actually gave me this because it didn't work out for her on her skin. I think she's got combination skin um, and very sensitive skin and it kind of broke her out a bit. Whereas I'm, my skin loves Clarins. Like it loves like high-end skincare. It's one I use like 
Nivea or I use kind of like um, Clean and Clear when I was younger. It was those kind of brands that used to just like irritate my skin. Um, so not so great for my bank balance, but what can you do? Um, I'm going to go in with my foundation first. Normally, if I'm doing, um, if I'm using eyeshadow, then I would always do my eyes first. But I'm going to do very minimal eyeshadow. So I'm going to use this foundation. And I have been testing this out for about, I would say like a good two, three months. I've only probably worn it two, three times in that time since I've had my baby. But... Um, I've worn it enough to know what I kind of think of it and honestly guys, it's a good one. Um, price point, I think it's about £10-£11. I'm in the shade, what shade am I in? F300. I wish they were just name shades normally but it's fine. Um, yeah, so I'm in the shade F300. I just use literally use one pump. And then what I've been doing is I've been taking my Kiehl's um, Midnight Recovery Concentrate. And it is an oil, so you uh, um, you would only really want to use this if you've got kind of very dry skin. Because my skin is quite dry at the minute, that's why I'm kind of using this oil. Just to make that fa the foundation that bit more comfortable. Um, but bear in mind, if you are going to mix oil into your foundation it's not going to last as long so I know I'm only going to sit and film a video and you know maybe pop out for a bit I don't need it to last me like 12 hours or I don't need it to last me through kind of like photography or anything like that um, if I did then I would probably not recommend using like any sort of oil or um, mixed into your foundation Especially if you've got like normal to combination skin, you don't want to do that. But yeah, um, I'm just using my fingers because I find foundation on dry skin either goes like works best with beauty blender, a damp beauty blender, or your fingers. So I'm just using my fingers because they still had a bit of the oilatum cream on, and then I work that into my skin as well. And if you have trouble like blending in your foundation and you've got dry skin, the oil really helps like helps it kind of like glide on. Um, and it makes your skin look a lot more dewy and healthy. So but yeah, this foundation, so far so good. I believe it was developed by someone who I don't know the history too much behind it. Um it says it's made in Italy, but um I know this foundation was kind of developed by someone um specifically for kind of your yellow toned, olive toned, darker skinned um, girls or guys. So that's my base on and this is how like if I was going to do my go to this is how I would keep my base. I would keep it so you can still see my skin, see my facial fuzz, um, see my moles and my beauty spots and all that kind of stuff. So. That's like the coverage that I pretty much tend to go for. But EX1 is definitely kind of like, I would say it's kind of medium coverage. Um, I definitely think you can build it up um, if you were to use a foundation brush or if you were to just apply maybe another layer. But for me, it's kind of a light to medium foundation. The colour choices that they have are pretty amazing. Um, again, if you've kind of got olive or yellow undertone skin, um, and it looks very much skin like it's not a very dewy foundation to be honest um but it still doesn't it's not it's still not super matte that is after i've done that i'm gonna just do my concealer and concealer i'm gonna use my mac pro longwear and this is in nc35 so just as a f i'm an nc40 um in the summer like if i go on holiday or from a little bit tanned than NC42, but NC42 is always just a little bit darker. NC40 is like perfect. So this is NC35, and I just apply that again with my fingers. I apply it underneath, and then I will take it right into the corner because that's where like the darkness kind of sits sometimes. 
my concealer I'm going to use the Laura Mercier secret brightening powder this is in one this powder is a stunning powder as stunning as kind of like brightening powders or translucent powders can be but it's so soft and so fine and it's almost like when you apply it the area that you apply this powder to I always find it kind of just like defocuses it like is that a word defocus but it kind of makes it look kind of like soft under there not as harsh it's like you've just gone over with like a blurring tool or something And then whatever's left on the product, uh, on the brush, I will just sweep over my eyelids. And then brows, I'm going to use angled brow brush and I'm going to just use my go-to, which is my Anastasia Dip Brow. And this is in Ebony. my Dip Brow Ebony. And I'm just going to, I always start, I always like, want to fill in this bit here that's where I have like the least amount of hair hair just here so I just do like little brush strokes and I don't worry about the shape yet I just do little brush strokes filling in that area and then I will go to the top and I will carve out a little how I want it to look And then I will just use whatever remaining product on the tail and I keep because I'm keeping that bit quite kind of angled and sharp I will just make sure the rest of the brow is just a lot softer that's just how I prefer to do my brows I know I've, like at the end of the day it's like a preference it's like your hair like everyone has a way they like to wear their hair and I think brows are no different And then what I do is because I've used like such a kind of harsh gel in that sense, I will always just use like, a powder and um, I have this one which is kind of like all mashed up but this is a Revolution Focus and Fix in medium dark. Um, I think it's only like three or four pound and I just use like a mixture of the taupey brown colours at the top and I just go through and just add that on top of the gel just to kind of like soften it because if you end up taking like a really close-up picture you can see like the gel product like clumping your brows together so I always just go over with like a powder and then for eyeshadow this is literally what I do I take my big 224 a big blending brush like this and I will go in and I will get my bronzer whether I'm using the contour kit from Anastasia or I'm using my Revolution bronzer, um, this is the light medium one and I will just take the shimmery bronze shade and I will take the matte bronze and I will just literally dip into it and then I will just put this in my crease, concentrating on the end and then I work it in a little bit and then I kind of just do like these little circular motions towards the outside and it just means that if I'm gonna wear eyeliner, because I find it hard to re wear eyeliner and not wear like anything on my eyelids, um, some t I think it just looks a bit just unfinished. So I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take actually the highlighter shade from the con uh, little contour kit from Makeup Revolution, taking a flat um, makeup brush, and I'm just gonna apply that to my brow bone and then blend it down just helps like add a little something especially if you're just going to do liner and then I'm just going to add a little bit of this in the inner corner too sometimes I find using your finger is so much easier when you're doing that the inner corner bit and then I'm going to go with liner. I'm going to use my trusted stiller. Um, this is the every stay all day waterproof eyeliner. So I'm just going to use that and line my eyes. Maybe I should put a mirror here so you can see what I'm doing. And then
So I do a thin line all the way across. This could be thick to some people, but to me it's a thin line. And because my eyes, you guys can probably see, because my eyes droop down, I honestly feel like liquid liner for me just helps my eyes look a little bit bigger and kind of lifted um, when I do like the flick. So no two flicks like are the same, but because my eyes droop down, I always have to kind of like lift them up a bit. like this nude can you see that no because i didn't draw anything yeah it's just like a nude eye pencil and this really helps when you look really tired <laughs> And then I'm gonna take the angled brush that I used for my brows, and because it has, still has a bit of dip dry. I'm gonna use that with the brow kit, and I'm just gonna take like this dark brown and then just push that powder basically, eyeshadow or brow product, just on the lower lash line. And because you've lined it with like a nude liner, it just helps um, kind of frame your eyes better. And then I don't go too far in because as soon as I go too far in here with a dark product, it's just going to like <laughs> close my eyes up. So for mascara, I'm going to go in with my trusted L'Oreal Voluminous. So I use this first. And then... I'm going to use the Maybelline Falsies. This is the one in like a like um, a shiny kind of lilac-y tube. And this is the Lash Sensational. I really didn't like this mascara um, when I first got it. But I have to say, after it's kind of been sat in my drawer, I don't know if it's because the formula's thickened a bit, um, just being sat there or what, but I actually kind of really like what it's doing to my lashes and then I'm just going to use my this is select sheer powder this is from MAC and this is in the shade NC40 I'm just going to take my Real Techniques expert face brush and I'm just going to uh, press that into my t-zone I don't really get oily like I said I've been having a lot of problems with dry skin but the sheer powder is so light and it's kind of like it's not drying at all and it doesn't look heavy so I just put that into the t-zone areas and then I'm going to take my kit again I love using one product like this or the little brow kit from um, Makeup Revolution and using it in like three different ways makes me happy <laughs> um, so I'm going to take the contour kit and the bronzer kit and I literally um, shade and I literally just press again just like I did with the eyeshadow and I just work that in so I apply it first with this brush and then I flick it up a little and then what happens is because of I'm using those two shades it gives me like the contour shade which is a little bit grey and then it gives me the warmth of the bronzer as well And then I just run whatever's left down my nose. And I know this brush is like way too big to contour your nose. Um, but I just like adding the colour there. Not really like contouring. And then I'm going to use my favourite brush at the minute that I'm using. It's, it's, it's Honey Jasmine by MAC. And it's just this pretty peach shade here 
peachy orange shade. I'm going to use my a MAC blusher brush and just apply that to the apples and just push it in. Faux, and I used this lipstick yesterday for the first time and I'm actually in love. I don't know where this colour has been. Um, I don't even remember wearing this when I used to work at MAC. Like I just think, I just thought it was a like, boring nude pink, whatever. But um, this is Faux. It's gorgeous and it's a satin as well. So it's got a little sheen to it. And it's very comfortable to wear as well. And I'm just going to put that straight on. And it reminds me of MAC Kinda Sexy, but it's obviously a satin finish. So guys, so that's pretty much it. Um, I will put the products below. I know I've been like really lazy with, with doing that um, throughout my pregnancy, but I will do that, even though I've kind of hopefully given you guys a good idea of what the products are called in the video anyway but um, I'll put them below anyway and uh, yeah this is my go-to if you ever see me out and about this is probably what I'm wearing um, except the lips are probably different but um, yeah I hope you guys indigestion I hope you guys enjoyed this video see you guys in the next video